So welcome guys, my name is Ricardo Pereira and today I'm going to show you how to publish a REST service. So don't leave and learn Mendix with me. Alright, so first let's see what we have in the project. So if I go to the domain model, you can see that I have here one entity called request. This entity have four attributes, one called REST, another name status and this status have two different values one is draft second is submitted and then we have a description and we also have two different pages one for the overview and the second for the new edit in my case i want to expose all the information that is inside the request entity so i'm going to start by right clicking in this entity and click expose as a rest resources so here we can click in select and select our module click in new let's give a name to this service in my case i'm going to give brs quest and click ok as a resource name i'm going to keep as request and the key attribute is going to be request ID. Regarding the operations, I want all the operations that you have here. So get all, get by key, post, patch, and delete. And I'm going to click OK. As you can see, multiple microflows and export mappings were created. And before we go there, we can go to the security, rest access, and click in user. You can also go to the microflow access and give access to all the microflows that were created automatically. And click OK. Regarding the authentication, we will select yes as a required authentication and as an authentication method. We will keep username and password as checked and also active section. All with rules, we will keep the user because this is the only one that we have inside this app. And regarding the resources, we have one that we just created called request and operations. We have all five that we, uh, we just selected before. So if we go inside, the get request we can see that we already have some actions here we double click on this action you can see that is retrieving all the requests because these uh, endpoints do not have any restriction if we go to the request get by key you can see that is a little bit different so as a parameter we have http response and also request id and as an uh, action, we have here the retrieve request, but now we have an XPath constraint applied to it. We also have a condition, just checking if the object exists or not. And if not exists, we are changing the HTTP response to have a status code as a 404 and saying not found. We also have another endpoints so for the request deletion. So we have the request ID and also the HTTP response. And here we are doing the same retrieve. So applying a XPF constraint based on the request ID. We have a decision just checking if the object exists or not, and then delete if it exists. If it doesn't, we do the same, so change the status code to 404 and uh, saying not found. If we go to the post endpoint, you can see that we are receiving a, a different structure. So as a parameter HTTP response and also a body. So this is information that who is consuming the API will send to the server. So on the body, and then we are creating HTTP header 
with the key location and also the value of our path and then the string uh, just with the request ID. And we also have in this flow a change object. So we are changing the status code for 201 and the, the recent phrase to create it. To update information, we also have an endpoint, so called request patch. In this case, we don't have any action here, just a parameter uh, with information about a body. Based on this um, information, let's search for the PRS request. And if you have your application running, you will have access to this link called location. And then it gives um, access to a Swagger page where we can see all the endpoints available. So you can see all the endpoints available on your service. So as you can see, you have get, and you can see the schema that will be exported. And you also have the possibility to change the format that will be exported. So XML or JSON. And to test it, you can go to authorize and do the login with MX admin, click in authorize, close, and then click in try it out and click in execute. As you can see, I already had some information in this application. So as you can see, we have uh, four objects exported. And we can try another endpoint so to get just one request. So click again in try it out. Select the request ID that you want to see. So click in execute. And as you can see, you have your answer here. You can always change to JSON if you prefer to do it. And execute again. You can use this page to test all the endpoints or you can use the Postman application to do it. So let's move to the Postman and then click in add a new request. And then you can go to your Swagger, just copy the URL service and paste it inside the Postman. But before we execute, we need to give the authorization. In our case, we are going to select basic authentication so the username it's mx admin and the password it's one so inside the header we can insert a new header to to export all the information as a json so as a key you can write that and as a value you can write application slash json and you can click in set if everything went well, you will receive the same answer that you receive inside the Swagger. And then if we add a slash one, we will just get one request object. We can also test the other endpoints. So change it to post, remove the slash one and go to body. Inside the body, you click in raw and go back to the swagger page go down to postman change it to json and you can just copy this structure paste it on the body field you can change it from text to json and remove the key request id we are removing this field because um, the request ID is auto number, so it should generate automatically one. As a name, I'm going to write test five. Status, we can keep, keep it as a draft. And description, we can change it to description of test five. If we click in send, it creates a new object. So as you can see, it returns uh, 201 created. So if we go to the application, login as MX admin, we can see a new entry here 
called test5 soft and then the description we just wrote. So if we go to back to the postman, so here we can also test the patch endpoint. So if we want to change the object we just created, so the number five, we can just insert it on the URL and then change the description, for example, to description of test six and keep it the name as test five. So send. And inside the application, we should see the test five with the description description of test test six. Perfect. Now we can go back to the studio and change a little bit what we are exporting. So currently, and going back to the postman just to see what we are getting now. So select get and then execute the, the get endpoint. So we are receiving four attributes, but I only need two. So it's the request ID and the name. So we can create a new export mapping. And to do it, we can just right click on our module and select export mapping. As a name, we can write EXM underscore request i'm going to call it simple and click ok in this request we are going to select a message definition that was created automatically with the publish rest service clicking select message definition clicking request and clicking select here we can just select a request ID and the name and click OK. Double click on the request entity, select request and click in map attributes by name. Click OK and OK again. Going back to the publish rest service, we can go to the get request request ID, double click and change the export mapping. So select and select the one we just created and then OK. If we run again the application, we should see the result. You can check the swagger or you can directly go to the postman. But let's go first to swagger and then go to the endpoint we just changed. We can Clicking try it out, select the object number five, and then execute. As you can see, it just returned the request ID and the name. We can also test it on the postman. So with the same endpoint, you can just click in send. And as you can see, it's a different result. We can also check the endpoint do a post and here as you can see you don't have any create object but the object is created when we execute the endpoint so this is happening because we also have a request import and as you can see all the information coming from the body field it's directly insert into a request object so in this case, what is happening is the auto commit, and that's the cause you don't need to have a create object action inside the post. In case you want to have control about this uh, endpoint, you can just create a non persistent entity called the request, and then you will get all the information coming from the body in this parameter, and you will just need to get a create object action and then insert it on the resistant entity. If you want, you can also change the request import mapping into the publish rest service. So if you go to the post endpoint, double click, you can see that here you have as a data type, a request and selected a request import. 
So if you double click, you have more options. In here, you can configure the parameter type. In our case, it's body, the name, body, object. So it's the request entity. Microflow parameter, it's the name that you will see inside the microflow. And then the mapping, you can select your import mapping with a non-persistent entity if you want to do it. If there is no object found, you can also change the behavior. So currently it's to create and ignore or just send an error. So the auto commit I just told you, it's coming from here. So every time that something it's import, it's created and then it's committed. You can also change this behavior by just changing this option to no. The same is happening with the patch endpoints. So if you double click, you can also check that you have two different parameters here. One is for the path where we get from the URL, the request ID to retrieve the correct object. And then you have the body option that is also uh, coming from an import mapping. And like in the post, you can change the behavior of it. As you can see, it's very simple to create a publish REST API. If you want a video just to change the authentication to a custom, like to have a JWT authentication or other token, you can just leave a comment in this video and I will do the video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave the like and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.